Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm Marky Walker from uh, Boston, and uh, I'm just the store owner, and uh, I've been Jury's friend for a couple years now, and um, we've just been helping each other elevate uh, and, you know, our lives and whatever uh, way and directions we take them. Glad to be here. And he's, he's playing store owner. Allison? Store owner, yep. Yeah. Hey, everybody. I'm Allison Mazila. I am playing, is it woman number or something? I don't have the script right in front of me. Anyway, uh, I'm, I'm very happy to be here, friend of Jerry's, and I know a lot of you guys. JT? Hi there, everybody. I'm JT Turner. I'm a member of SAG-AFTRA and Equity. I'm just here to support Jerry, so I look forward to your performance this evening. Thanks. Uh, Tanya and Ariana. Hi, I'm Tanya. I am one of the buddies. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ariana Hay, and I'm 911 dispatcher. And one other body. And the other body, yeah. <laughs> uh, Gus? Gus? Hi, I'm Gus. Um, Augustus. I am <laughs> cinematographer and also uh, store staff. And editor. And editor, yes. DP editor and then store staff. Yep. Uh, Samantha? I just realized I was not on mute. Hi, I'm Samantha and um, I am here to support jury and we're on similar missions about eradicating human trafficking and child abuse. So I'm just so happy to be here. Samantha, can you call? Oh, your organization and then um, your title? The, the, oh, yes. I'm the CEO and the founder of the Lighthouse Project. Um, and our mission is to build freedom, shelter, education to men, women, and children saved from human trafficking, child abuse, and domestic violence. And you are in Arizona. I'm in Curly in Arizona. We are also up in um, Florida. So um, I think the next state that I'll be entering, I'm going back to my home state, Florida, but the next state the Lighthouse Project will be entering will be Texas. So, but we're also doing a lot of work already in Canada. So we're international and we are looking at bridging into India. So a lot, a lot of good stuff. Lighthouseproject.org. Debbie? Hello. Yeah, I'm here supporting Jury. Um, I actually work with Samantha as her director of strategic partnerships. And so we're definitely interested in this partnership. Addison? Hi, guys. Um, I'm Madison Monahan. I will be playing uh, Norma. And Jerry's also a friend of mine. I met her doing one of James Dumont's acting classes last, I think, last year. Um, and she's wonderful, and I'm very excited to, to take on this story that's really important and should be shared. Paul? Hi, everyone. I'm Paul Noonan. Um, I recently met Jury and her son, Jaden. Um, and uh, although I've been following Jury, Jury for a while now, and uh, I'm thrilled to be here. I'm playing the, the counselor. Um, I know a few people here. Hi, Allison. Hi, Ralph. Um, and nice to meet and see everybody else. Ralph Ayala. Hi, my name is Ralph. Whoops. Sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. My name is Ralph Ayala, and um, I was fortunate enough to meet Jerry on a commercial shoot. Um, it was filmed in the Boston Commons. I'm friends with, I know, Allison, Paul, and Madison. Madison, you have come a long way in this business. Love it. I love it. I will... <laughs> so good to see you. <laughs> you and Allison. Rob Ayala, you can look him up on IMDb. He has 15 credits on IMDb. 16. 16 now. That's right. Stop. <laughs> He's very, very accomplished um, 
actor. I'm very, very honored to be working with him. AJ. Hi, um, I'm AJ Barallo. I had the honor of meeting Jerry at Starbucks because that's where I work. And uh, she is very kind enough to let me into her circle. And I'm happy to be here as um, victim three and another store extra. I mainly do voice acting. So it's going to be my first time really doing like on film and stuff. And she uh, sings J-pop and K-pop too. Uh, Ilya? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ilya Tsimbal. I am, um, I met Jerry recently um, at a movie shoot uh, in Boston. And I'm going to be uh, playing man number two. All right, so let's actually go straight to the reading. And then I just want to appreciate everybody for being here for my first ever written script. And then I'm directing and I just want to let you know, I went to Town Hall of Foxborough and then formed DBA, Do Business As. So formerly Pajira Productions is officially a production company that you're gonna be working with. The, my first stars <laughs> and a crew. So yes. <laughs> so. Thank you, everyone. Now, um, Jason Javasio is not here. He's man one. Um, so maybe Ralph, if you can read uh, man one um, to substitute Jason, that'd be great. And stage direction, um, if AJ can read stage direction, page page two, three, uh, Tanya or Ariana, if you guys can read the stage direction. Uh, so, Let's see, and Gus, you can keep taking the notes of shot list or whatever you have. So um, let's see, let's start from scene number one. And maybe AJ, if you can do scene number one stage direction, and I'm gonna stop recording because this part, oh, you know what, I'm not, because um, I'm not gonna share on the internet. I'm um, just gonna stop this. I'm not gonna stop um, share on the internet because uh, we haven't like no. So my plan is uh, send script out for the film festival, and then once we film this, I'm planning to send the script. Uh, sorry, film out to the film festival, and uh, we're gonna highlight like say project, life house project. Sorry, life house project. Uh, at the end of the credit, they are combating human trafficking frontline and doing such a great job. So I really wanna dedicate this film to organization like that. Uh, people who are frontline. So I really appreciate it. And then um, I am a journalist and I'm covered human trafficking story. I'm a survivor of child sex abuse. And this is really um, important piece for me in a way that people don't understand after mass of sexual assault and then trafficking. I'm not a victim of trafficking, but um, you know, I'm really hoping that this can be maybe conversational starter piece and then bringing awareness and then um, that people uh, would have call to action, like, you know, do something about it. So uh, I really appreciate you being brave to be a part of it and not scared to tell the truth to the world. And so AJ, if you can do, if you can read scene one, that'd be great. Do you want me to like start from like scene one, scene one, or like from the close up of the light? No, no, uh, scene one, interior counselor. Yeah. Go ahead. All right, scene one, interior counselor's office, Friday, July 18th, 2025. 1.23 p.m. session number one. Should I read the parentheses too? Actually, um, it's okay, don't worry about it. EMDR session. Close up of the light going left to right and her eyes following the light. Dim setting, no sound. Just light and her eyes following them. You started to hear her breathing. Keep Scene on. two, exterior at Minimart at gas station. Thursday, July 18th, 2024, 2.22 a.m. The store owner walks to the employee's room and talks to another employee. Yo, taking a break. Be back in 10. Watch the store. The store owner goes outside, smokes a cigarette. After throwing the cigarette on the ground, he goes to a bathroom around the corner of the store. He is texting his girlfriend and sees sticking legs near the dumpster on the corner of his eyes. What? He stops texting and goes over to the dumpster and finds a lady. She doesn't have many clothes on. Short pants, tank top, bare feet, cuts on her face and feet, but not filthy. What, what, the, what the fuck? Are you okay? Oh God. 
you don't look okay. What happened? Are you okay? Lady? Holy, holy shit. The lady on the ground looks at the store owner quickly and stares back at the ground with tears and fear, shaking and terrified. Can, can I get some water? Lady is shaking. Her lips are almost purple. Is that all you need? I'll be, I'll be right back, okay? Store owner places a phone call to 911. 911, what's your emergency? Hello? I'm the store owner of a mini mart gas station at, uh, at 35 uh, Great Plain uh, Avenue. There's a lady outside my store, bad condition, shaking and crying, and she has cuts, cuts. Okay, okay, we will send officers. A patrol officer arrives at the scene and sees the lady. Police officer uses his searchlight to light her face and examine her body. Ma'am, what's, what's going on here? What, what is your name? Lady is hesitating to say her name, scared. Finally, she answers, but is shaking hard. My, my, my name is <clears throat> Norma. She started to cover her face and started to shake more screams. Close shot of Norma's feet with poli police and lights. Zoom out to wide shot and possibly drone shot and zoom back into the face of Norma shaking and crying. Officer calling for backup through his radio. Okay, so um, maybe Ariana, would you read the scene um, direction? Scene three smash cut. Do you feel comfortable, Ariana? Scene three, one year later. Friday, July 18th, 1 p.m., 2025, session number one. Very calm and soothing. Counseling office. An object of a small water fountain that is making a calm water sound. Hello, Norma. I'm Dr. David Walsh. It's very nice to meet you. Dr. Walsh, nice to meet you, too. You can call me David, Norma. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing all right, Dr. David. <laughs> I, uh, I know you were referred by the DA's office, and according to the victim's advocate, you had experienced some pretty significant trauma right before the store owner at the Mini Mart uh, found you and placed a 911 call. Do you remember that? Norma started to shake and cry a little, but keeping her calm and composure, and looks right into the counselor's eyes. Yeah, it was exactly a year ago today. I see. So will you feel comfortable telling me what happened to you? All right, um, Ilya, do you mind to read the stage direction on scene four? <clears throat> sure. Um, scene four? Scene four, yep. Uh, Cut to three years ago from the incident at Minimar. Wednesday, July 7, 2021, 5.28 p.m. Slate on the screen. Interior in Norma's bedroom. She sees the cell phone and sees the man texted him. Um, and text shows where and when to meet up. Uh, Scene five, exterior at park. At night, Norma is sitting on a bench in a park. She has a pretty dress on and a nice, a nice makeup and Dior perfume on. A man walks up to her with two cups of coffee and hands one to Norma. Man. Oh, Ralph, if you can do man, please. <clears throat> man, man, one and, and man, so. Sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, man, hey, Norma. Can you read that part, hey, Norma? Uh, hey, Norma. I would shake your hand, but my hand's full. I know you told me oddly, like a night, night later. <laughs> oh, yeah, all right. Sorry, um, I know you told me oddly, like a night later. Here's That's one for you. Mm -hmm. Can you take it? Norma smiles and takes the latte from a man and drinks a sip. A latte, all right, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god this is that's so sweet mm, i love this 
Thank you so much. And it's so nice to finally meet you. Finally, right. You, you are so pretty. And I don't mean <clears throat> to be inappropriate, but you smell very nice. And I love your dress also. Thank you very much. I'm glad you like mine, Dior. Dior. I'm so happy that we finally got to meet in person after this crazy pandemic and isolation. Exactly. This is my first time meeting someone outside the family members after one and a half years. I don't feel comfortable meeting someone inside, so thank you for meeting with me at the park tonight. <clears throat> but don't worry, as I mentioned, I am fully vaccinated. Oh, I'm also fully vaccinated, so don't worry about COVID. And that's totally understandable. So shall we take around, walk around the park a little bit? Norma tries to stand up, but she starts to feel dizzy and loses control of her body, and the man catches her body. Another man quickly appears from nowhere, wearing plastic gloves, dumps the rest of her latte, and puts in a trash bag carefully. Two men carry Norma to, into their SUV rapidly. When they open the trunk, there are two other girls in there in the car unconscious. Car drives off slowly to an unknown location. A shot of an empty bench, and the camera pans up to the sky. So eight. AJ, if you can take a uh, stage direction from scene six, that'd be great. Okay. Cut to interior dark room. Norma has a very pretty dress on, her hands tied up with a rope unconscious. Norma slowly gains consciousness and opens her eyes and sees one light bulb hanging from above and screams. She sees some girls or a girl lying next to her still unconscious. Two men come inside the room. Madison, you're muted. Madison, you're muted. Sorry. <laughs> what, what is this? Where am I? What did you do to me? Well, good morning and calm down, sweetie. We're just having a fun night, right? Just relax and enjoy the ride, baby. You'll be very well taken care of and there is nothing to worry about. I have, have a feeling you and the girls are gonna be addicted to this lifestyle and never wanna go back to your regular lives. Oh yes, I've seen that happen often. So just close your eyes and enjoy the sensation. Norma realizes that these are gangs and human traffickers and starts to fight off the rope, but cannot. She screams and starts to cry in panic. No need to do that, love. You're safe as long as you obey our small requests. Just learn to accept and forgive all the sins you've committed in the past. You can trust us to do the work. We'll, you will have the prettiest clothes, money, nothing to worry about. Just let us take real good care of you, honey, okay? Norma looks down and notices she has number 22 tagged on her shirt. Man too says quietly to himself in Russian, Сегодня прибывает еще очередная партия. До пандемии бизнес шел хорошо, а сейчас просто золотая жила. Do I read the subtitle? Or... No, no, don't worry about the subtitle. Yeah. Norma stares at the guys with so much fear but anger in her eyes. Her tears fall. Norma is not giving up all the hopes. A woman appears bringing Norma and other girls some jewelry and bags. Norma, you will do so well. I can tell by your pretty look. You will learn quickly to be someone like me. I'm here to mentor you, love. You can be the best version of yourself very soon. I can tell that bitch can make us so rich. You got a good one this time. Well, actually, every time. Scene seven. Cut back to Interior Counselor's office, Friday, July 18th, 2025, 1.11 p.m., session number one. <clears throat> I met some trafficking victims who said EMDR worked for them. I'm willing to try, you know, I wanna move forward and live life again. <clears throat> Although that does sound impossible.
Paul, you're muted. Paul, you're muted. Thank you. Well, you're brave just being here. So let's begin our session. Oh, and by the way, I know you did some research on EMDR, but just to make sure that you're clear on what exactly it is, it's eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, which is, it's a form of psychotherapy developed by Francine Shapiro starting in 1988. So what I want you to do is I want you to breathe deeply and keep breathing deeply and follow that light that goes left and right rapidly until I stop, okay? But in the meantime, what I want you to do is think about the worst thing that's ever happened to you. I know it's gonna be hard, but think about the worst thing that's ever happened to you and focus on that incident while you're following the light, okay? And we're gonna continue for about five minutes and I want you to tell me what you saw. The counselor starts to turn on the light. Norma follows the light. Maki, can you read the scene direction, scene eight, please? You want me to do scene eight, nine, or just <clears throat> eight? Uh, scene eight and scene nine, uh, stage direction. Okay. Exterior near Mini Mart as gas station. Thursday, July 18th, 2024, 2 a.m. Indi indicates this in the, in the frame. Oh, fish dog shot. You can hear Norma's heavy breathing eventually reveal the back of a half-naked Norma. Close shot of her bare feet. The camera from the ground level is following her in her footsteps. She is limping, and you can see Mini Mart gas station in the distance, but not too far. Scene 9. Initial counselor's office, Friday, September 5th, 1 p.m., 2025. Session 8. So... How are you coping these days? It's our eighth session. How has EMDR helped you? Honestly, EMDR has helped me to see what happened to me and helped me to recognize and see the hell that I experienced like a movie. Yeah. Are you doing anything to take care of yourself, take care of you? I'm taking Kena. Um, someone recommended taking it, which helps to open my heart taking Lurisidian. I don't like Western medicine. I'm also watching Brad Yates taping EFT. That's excellent. You're doing great with self-care. I'm highly impressed with your wisdom, Norma. Your resilience, your resources, you're really doing great. <clears throat> yeah, I'm really lucky. I've met so many friends in the support group, the victims group, and the DA's office recommended some positive, tangible ways to cope with my trauma. Mm, that's so reassuring to hear that the DA's office is helping you in that way <clears throat> and, and how connected you are with me during these sessions. So, so what do you think your goal is? I'm aware that this has a lifelong effect on me, and I'm aware that what happened to me was tragic and stupid and I I just hate myself mm -hmm. oh Norma starts to get upset and cry Dr. David Walsh offers a tissue to Norma <sighs> thank you you're doing the strongest thing to come to the counseling session you really are and, and just know that what happened to you was not your fault Norma it was an absolute tragedy no one should ever experience that Thank you, David. I'm trying so hard to put my life together. Well, I, I can see that in you. <clears throat> well, Norma, let me ask you this. What are your thoughts and what, what's your concept of forgiveness? You know, many people told me that I should just forgive and forget. But when you do experience the worst nightmare for the longest time and there's like no end to it, you just come to the point that no one's ever going to understand and no one ever should understand what I've experienced. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you. No Maria. No Maria, I'll, I'll read it. No yeah. Maria, what, what he meant and he get and get angry and stares at him for a while wait david but you look that. like you've had the perfect life i don't sense any struggles in you having this perfect office and job and you just being so calm and professional 
how the hell can you just pretend and casually say, yes, I agree with you? I don't like when people have shallow compassion. No. Uh, uh, Maki, there's an uh, instruction, like a uh, counselor. I got it. Yeah. The counselor takes a moment and discuss what Norma just said and looks dead at Norma's eyes. Close up to David's eyes, you can see tears, but the drop, but the teardrops do not fall. Well, Norma, it's because I'm I'm a part of Me Too and the Me Too movement also. I didn't just want to get educated on being a counselor and go to school. I, I, I wanted to help others since I know firsthand what it's like to be violated. It was my uncle. Fuck. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm so sorry that I judged you. That's awful. You know, I know this may be an odd statement, but I came up with an idea to never forgive the perpetrator and learn to forgive yourself to not forgive. Wrong is wrong. I mean, don't we all know that? And I want to give myself the power and the permission to forgive myself for not forgiving the fuckers who prey on us and profit off of our innocence. The counselor takes a beat and digests what she just said. I've never really heard of that concept, but, but that definitely empowers you, and I would think that it helps you to cope. I, I, I think it's brilliant, especially if it helps you. And, and thank you for sharing your wisdom with me today. I feel every victim has a different method of healing and a way to forgive or to not forgive. In my opinion, everyone's solution is valid. Norma shed a tear, but not bothered to wipe and look straight into the council's eyes. Well, looks like our time's up. Look, Norma, you are doing truly great work. And re remember, today will never come back, right? So make the absolute best of your life, regardless of what our adversities might be. You're doing that. Have a nice rest of your week. You too. And shout out EMDA machines, skin goes black, and then these facts appear, human trafficking, the billion dollar industry that seems to never have a period to this, it's crime to love. And then you can read the rest of res uh, resources that's, um, ah, but anyways, <laughs> it was amazing. Thank you very much. Quick, uh, we have nine minutes, go around the room and then quick thoughts from everyone, um, maybe 30 seconds or so. Mikey, start from here. Um, I thought it went great. Uh, I wasn't ready to, to read on the spot, but I, I, I thought I did okay trying, picking it up. <laughs> I like how you put cigarette and it looked outside and everything. Allison? Oh, um, yeah, I, I thought it went very well. I, I love the group of people we have. There's a lot of um, authenticity and heart that's definitely going to be put into this, and I'm excited to work with everyone. Oh, let's go, Allison. Um, I do kind of want to learn Russian for this line, so maybe Ilya. <laughs> I speak Slovak, so it's pretty close to Russian. It wouldn't be that hard, but um, no, I loved it. I think it's really, really great. I, I like the arc of Madison's character. Paul, you're just so gentle and comforting, and um, I think it's going to be a really powerful film. Uh, Ariana and Tanya. Great casting. I think everyone kind of fits each character. You did a great job. Um, everyone's a really good um, actors, and I think it's a great way to spread awareness because obviously this is a terrible thing. I hope people receive a good message from it. Ariana, how, tell, tell everyone how old you are. I just turned 14. 14 years old. Mm -hmm. She was a uh, Beauty and Beast Bell star. She's a very talented actor and very happy to have her. Um, Gus? Uh, just like visually, there's like a recurring theme in multiple scenes of their eyes. And so I think that will be kind of interesting to use. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Paul? Make sure. I 
I make sure I'm off mute by staying off mute all the time. Um, uh, this was great. Jerry, thank you very much for just thinking of me for this. It was great to be a part of it. This is, um, it's something that's, that's, it's very important for awareness to be brought to it. Not enough awareness, I think at this point. Um, so you're doing great things, Jerry. And, um, and I think the casting was fantastic. And it's, uh, it's nice to see some old friends after a while. And Madison, you did fantastic. Thank you. Oh, you as well. Excited for Very. Maddie and Paul, like, I just really loved how you um, use your words and they really free, feel free to, like, you know, change it around. Like, you know, you did such a great job. Very. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Ralph? I, uh, hi, I'm happy to be part of the team. Everybody did an amazing job. Madison, Paul, Allison. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Okay. Um, and I promise I won't get stuck on that word latte again. Um, <laughs> my first time reading the script, so. <laughs> but um, everybody did a wonderful job. Glad, glad to be Body. part of the team. Okay, AJ? Yeah, I think this casting is phenomenal. Like, I'm floored by everyone's performances, and I'm very excited to be part of something that's very important, too like just the community in general. Ilya, Marky, uh, mute yourself, mute yourself, mute. For me? No, Marky, mute yourself. Hey, Ilya. Um, yeah, uh, good job, everyone. Oh, okay, uh, Paul, hey, that's weird. Um, really nice how you like really took it and made it yours and, and like really came through genuine and like good job like awesome uh marquee like fantastic like really <laughs> so realistic um so yeah i mean everybody good job and uh happy to be a part of it and really nice to meet everybody so uh happy to contribute same to you uh, and yeah you. like if anybody needs uh pointers on russian pronunciation or anything <laughs> happy to do it Ilya, you did an amazing job. I was so creeped out. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then Mikey is not really, this is like the first time he's acting. He's like, you know, my like podcaster friend. <laughs> so, great job, Mikey. <laughs> Debbie? I really enjoyed it, guys. And, you know, if this was the first time you guys all coming together to do this, it was phenomenal. I was, I'm really proud to be a part of watching this uh, first time. JT? Well, I just thank you for inviting me. I really didn't get a chance to look at the script at all. And Jerry just invited me this afternoon to watch. And thank you all so much. It's very, very moving. Jerry, wonderful work. Really good. Thank you. And JT and his partner, Mercy, have been helping the victim of sexual assault and then um, DV. And uh, they even, I don't know if I can say it. JT, would you say it? Oh, no, we, you don't want to say. I don't know what you mean. So, <laughs> so I, don't, I, I don't know. Of the sexual assault. And then you guys have been helping a lot of people. Oh, quite a few people. Oh, I met them on the mothership um, set. But anyways, um, Samantha? I'm just so honored that um, you let Lifehouse be here and be a part of this script, you guys. It was wonderful, awesome, and just thank you so much for helping bring awareness with Jury. We're just so honored to be here. So thank you so much. And if you ever need us, please call us. Jury knows how to get in contact with us. We're here. This is all about collaboration and partnering up with each other. So thank you so much. Thank you. Just to let you know, Samantha and Debbie, we met through Clubhouse. I don't know if you know the app Clubhouse. And then um, I reached out to her. She was on Fox World Cable Access. I interviewed her. And Debbie and Samantha invited me as a keynote speaker for the nonprofit talk. And then um, I, I'm very honored that uh, we were able to support the organization as well. But anyways, uh, it's like three minutes left. So I just want to thank everyone. And then my action plan next is to have um, 
location scout and it's a few locations that I need and then uh, Gus and I talk about specific shot lists and stuff but again I take um, initiative of the script and then um, I'm really excited and I will circle back what the, what the day will be like and then the wardrobe wise if you have the perfect wardrobe for specific scenes um, you know feel free to bring options and then uh, Wushu and then Gus is gonna do an amazing job editing this and then I'm um, very very excited and thank you so 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 much for coming tonight I know you are all so busy and this project means a lot and then this is gonna be my first ever baby return directing producer uh, film and then I just want to let you know I won outstanding grand prize for outstanding woman in Boston 48 uh, this past May so I was given $250 for rental equipment from this place in Newton so I'm really thinking to use that price to add some equipment to uh, this project and then as far as Lifehouse um, we will continue to support lifehouseproject.org thank you everyone for coming and I will be in touch and I really appreciate super talented people crew and I can't wait to start shooting. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Jerry. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Good to meet everybody. Bye-bye.